When you hear the word toxic, who or what comes to your mind? Maybe a friend or multiple friends or even a parent or a boss that you've worked for or a co-worker or a classmate. The list is practically endless. Many times we have the tendency of hearing for other people and checking out what's wrong in other people before we take the time to hear ourselves or check out what is wrong with us. This is why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 1 to 5. 1. Don't judge so that you won't be judged. 2. You receive the same judgment that you give people. Whatever you deal out, will be dealt out to you. 3. Why do you see the splinter that's in your brother's eyes or your sister's eyes but then notice the log in your own eye? 4. How can you say to your brother or your sister, let me take the splinter out of your eye when there's a log in your own eye. 5. You deceive yourself. First, take the log out of your eye and then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's or your sister's eye. A lot of people have taken these out of context to say that you should never point out what is wrong in someone else's life or help your friends to get better, but you should simply leave them as they are as a proof of love. But that is exactly not what Jesus was trying to say here. Jesus is talking about the tendency of man to point out what is wrong in other people's lives before they even bother to take a look at their own lives to see if they're not doing the exact same thing. But that's only when you're truly able to look at your own life and find out what's wrong and fix it that you can be so sure that you'll really be able to help the other person. So be careful that every time you hear a message or God sends a conviction, you are not simply receiving it for everyone else when in fact God meant it for you. You may be the toxic person in your group or the person with toxic habits and yet you think it's everyone else who has a problem. You may be the one who is constantly communicating to people that they don't matter by your words and your actions and yet you think that people are simply abandoning you. You may be the one who constantly stonewalls every time you have to have a difficult conversation or looks down on others in your speech or actions but you are so used to it and your actions are so ingrained that you don't realize what you're doing. Are you a toxic person? We're not going to spend the time going over every toxic habit or trait in this video because we've already done that in previous videos but if you do find out that you are the toxic person in your friendships or relationships or family, I want you to know that it's not too late. That's not the end of a story. Thank God for Jesus. You may see that you have toxic traits, God may be bringing it to your notice, but it's because he wants you to know that you don't have to settle at this level of unfulfilling relationships with people or at having constant issues when you try to relate with people. You don't have to continually leave struggling to get people to open up to you and yourself to open up to people. Here are six things that you can do on your journey going from toxic to a non-toxic person. Number one, identify the toxic persons. You see, the truth is, child of God, you really are not a toxic person. If you have given your life to Christ and submitted to God, the Bible says you are a new creation. This new creation is who God has made you to be, so it's not toxic. You cannot be toxic because you look like God, you resemble God. The problem is, you're a different person on the inside, but you still have the old toxic habits and patterns. There's a very big difference. You see, God is not trying to get you to change who you are. He's already done all of that on the cross. He's trying to get you to change what you do so that it can line up with the new you. What the devil tries to do is to convince you that the real you is a toxic person and you cannot avoid yourself forever. But this simply is not true. You may act toxic or think in toxic ways or have toxic patterns because that's what you're used to doing but the real you, the person who God made, is exactly like him, like his child, is a king, a priest and is definitely not toxic. So you must identify the patterns and set about changing them. You cannot change what you don't understand. This is why the first step is trying to understand what makes you do the things that you do. In what situations do you react in toxic ways? And how do you set about building new patterns? 
Number two, submit to God. Submitting to God means that you understand that this is a process that he's walking you through. That the both of you are in it together. You must submit to what he says about you. When the devil brings thoughts of your past actions and tries to make it look like nothing will ever change, submission to God and to his word means that you repeat what God has said about who you really are in his word and the fact that nothing is impossible with him. You may not feel like it and it may not seem like it but it's possible to let those habits go. Those patterns can be a thing of the past. First John chapter 5 verse 4 tells us that because you were born of God, you have overcome the world, which includes habits and patterns, and even though they are from your past. This also means that you must know what the word says about you. You must take the time to find out what God has said about who you really are, so you do not go about confusing your habits and your patterns that you're trying to change with your identity. Number three. Replace the patterns. So let's imagine now you know who you are. You're armed with the word for when the devil comes on the attack. You know how you're supposed to act according to who God has said you are and if identify the patterns and the situations where you act differently from your new identity. It's time to get into action and actually begin to do differently. The grace of God is available to take new steps and to build new patterns. Use the grace. Figure out starting with one or two habits that you'd like to change and how you would like to act differently in certain situations or behave differently in your relationships. Perhaps you'd like to listen more empathetically instead of turning the attention to yourself when other people have something to say. You've got to practice. Be patient while you practice and depend on the strength of the Holy Spirit. Ask him to show you the opportunities when you can put into practice the new actions or responses that you've thought of and try as much as possible to replace the patterns when he does show you opportunities. You will not always get it right, I promise you, but if you remain patient through all of the process and if you keep trying even when you fail, then it's only a matter of time before you have new non-toxic habits. Number four, and lastly, Get help and support. It could be a pastor, a leader to church, a mentor, a counselor or a therapist or even someone who's been through the same process that you were going through. Don't try to do everything yourself. Open yourself up to people helping you and you will not just build new habits more quickly but you would also be able to be happier and grounded through the process. May the Lord give you strength. God bless you.